welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you, you, spend your wine dollars wisely. We're, uh, let's see, March 2nd is when this is going up, Washington Wine Month. The official Washington Wine Month is March. They now have one in August as well. And I support that one. I used to fight it for a long time. Well, we really only need one Washington Wine Month. The original Washington Wine Month is March. The idea is to get people behind Washington wines, to focus on Washington wines, and to really educate people about what a great wine producing state this is. Second largest producing state in the United States. Of course, way behind California, but it overtook New York quite a few years ago, and now it's the number one number two producing uh, state in the United States. Fairly young uh, wine history in Washington, so it's surprising that it has catapulted that much. 50,000 acres of vineyards. If you remember in the South African uh, episode, there's 237,000 acres of vineyards. So you can kind of see the difference there. Um, there are over 900 wineries now, and over and 350 independent wine growing, uh, independent grape growers in the state of Washington. Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and the other cool thing, and I mentioned this many times before. Sorry for the little hiccup there, is that Washington does a lot of different varietals very well. Um, they do uh, Grenache and so. Tempranillo, uh, you can go, the list can go on and on of the grapes that they can grow and do quite a good job. Over 70, 70 varietals are planted in the state of Washington. Crazy. So there you go. So we're, gonna, we're not going to devote the entire month of March to Washington wines, but there will be quite a few episodes featuring Washington wines. And of course, we need to start out with Cabernet Sauvignon, probably the most respected grape in the world. Um, um, it, of course, got its fame in Bordeaux, where it's blended a lot with Merlot and Cab Franc, uh, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and, uh, but Cab is like the king of red wines. Number one selling red wine in the United States. Uh, it's actually behind Chardonnay, believe it or not. 18% um, of production in Washington State goes to Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's a big thing. Um, I remember back in the day uh, where Cab was not quite as popular in Washington State as Merlot was. I still think, I still think, and you've heard me say this many times, that Merlot uh, is one of the best grapes that Washington grows, along with Syrah. But they do a really nice job with Cab as well. And um, we're going to get started right off the bat. All these roll in at $15 or under. So this is 2015 Murph, Murph, Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley, the District Wines, St. David of David Murfield. Oh, okay. The District Wines of David Murfield, excuse me. This rolls in at $13. This is a, another project by Chateau St. Michel. Chateau St. Michel is the biggest winery in Washington State. They're huge. And they have a lot of uh, what we call uh, second labels. They dominate, I mean, really, 14 Hands is huge, uh, Red Diamond, Columbia Crest, um, Snoqualmie, uh, Murph now. They just they have a lot of different labels. So they do a lot of production, huge production. They're owned by a smokeless tobacco company. There's wind in the air. There's rumors in the air that they might be bought out by another company. We don't know. We'll wait and see. Let's see what we get on the note. Murph Cabernet Sauvignon, $13. A little bit of uh, caramelized cherries. No, caramelized cherries and currants. Now, just to be quite honest with you, I really... It's one of those aromas I don't necessarily like in a, in a red wine, and that's caramel. When I get caramel, it kind of scares me, but I'm not, I'm not jumping to any conclusions here. A little bit of menthol coming through, which is kind of cool. No pun intended. A little bit 
challenge, not super aromatic, but let's see what we get on the palate. That caramel comes through big time on the palate. This is what I would call a sweeter style cab because of that caramel element that comes through. That is most likely any oak treatment they give it would give that caramel flavor. In fact, the caramel is so prominent, I'm not getting too much fruit. Maybe a little bit of uh, currants, but it's almost like somebody took a currant, dipped it in caramel, and you threw it in your mouth with a little bit of spices thrown in, maybe some white pepper, uh, maybe some, uh, what else we get? Maybe a little bit of nutmeg thrown in there. A little tobacco and a lot of chocolate on the finish. Now, a little bit of grip action as well. Very smooth, polished cab, um, not a huge amount of complexity, but enough to keep you interested. It's just that caramel is coming through big time. Not a huge fan of that flavor profile in my Cabernet Sauvignon, but I will tell you that there's a lot of you out there that might just really like this wine because of that kind of sweet element that comes through. It's not a sweet wine, don't get me wrong. It's just that sweet caramel stuff. Well, I shouldn't say it's not a sweet wine. It sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? Obviously, it is. I mean, it's definitely uh, uh, caramel coated caramels, caramel coated currants, excuse me, <laughs> with a little bit of structure to it and all that. Uh, this is like a big time delicious factor if that's what you're looking for in your cab. Not for me at all. Not for me at all. Um, you know, not liking it, but it's not a bad Cabernet. It's just not what I expect out of a Cabernet Sauvignon. You know, when you drink a cab, you have an expectation. This would be a nice introductory cab to somebody that maybe wants to step into Cabernet Sauvignon. But guess what? You better find something close to, for their second try, and that would be hard to do with this wine. I'm, I'm just going to go, I think it's average. There's nothing wrong with it. So I'm just going to go straight up C. Let's move on. 2015 Airfield Estates. Cabernet Sauvignon, Yakima Valley. This rolls in at $15. They do a, an amazing Merlot, by the way, these guys. I like this winery. I like, actually, Yakima um, Appalachian is one of my favorites in Washington State. Uh, Rattlesnake Hills, all those areas, Snipes Mountain, um, DeBrule Vineyards is in Yakima which is a famous vineyard, by the way. Cote Bonville, uh, that's their vineyard. Uh, a lot of people just really, really go after that fruit. It's hard to get. He was a great vineyard manager. He's the owner. Great guy. His daughter is a winemaker for Cote Bonville. Anyway, let's get back to Airfield Estate. I like Yakima Appalachian a lot. There's a lot of good sub-Appalachians in Yakima Valley. Um, it's part of the bigger Columbia Valley Appalachian, the huge Columbia Valley Appalachian. Um, so I would, in order, I would say Red Mountain's my favorite, then Yakima, then Walla Walla. Sometimes I like Walla Walla wines a little bit better than Yakima, but by far my favorite Appalachian in Washington State is Red Mountain. Let's see what we get on the notes. Yes. This has a little black tea leaf thing going on on the nose. Getting a little licorice and cherries and blackberries. Yeah, but that uh, that green, that uh, black tea leaf, that tea thing going on. And a little underlying. Now I got a little bit of like underlying fur needles, which is kind of cool. That was kind of surprising. A little like, you know, when you break off a fur branch, you get that fresh fur needle thing going on. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. A little salal leaf, too. I like that. Let's, now, um, just going back, a Washington State 
uh, has very few bad vintages. I'm really digging 15. I love 13. 14 is good, um, but 13 was by far my favorite. They had a tough vintage in 11. Uh, that was a tough one for a lot of them, but a lot of the 11s, if you held on to them, are coming out really well now. So let's see what we get on the palette. If you like black tea, you're going to love this wine. Huge amounts of black tea blended with blackberries and currants. Good structure. I mean, solid structure. Um, nice little bit of a, a leather grippy action on the backside. Solid wine. Really is. Even a little bit of a let that Salau leaf thing coming through. I say Salau leaf because I picked Huck of Salau when I was a kid. It just kind of sticks with me. Um, all those kind of flavor profiles, things that you remember, that's how you develop those in your palate. And if you're very interested in doing that sort of thing, you go out and try new things and see. But I get, get a lot of black tea in this wine. I don't even like black tea, but I do like it in wine for some reason. I like that flavor profile. Good structure. A little grippy on the back side. This baby probably needs about three to four years before it's going to come out in full bloom. It's going to show you what it what it really has there. Um, yeah, I think this will evolve quite nicely. It's fairly youthful cab, um, but like I said, good structure. It's 15 bucks. I mean, to get this quality and to in your mouth for 15 bucks, it's pretty impressive. Nice. I even get a little bit of that fur needle thing right on the back end. Nice solid grip, good structure, good balance. Um, yeah, you could not jump from this Murph to this one. You could not get a student, new student of cab to jump from this to this. They might not like it. But this is a solid cab. I'm going to go B plus, straight up B plus. And for 15 bucks, you're in for a nice surprise with this wine. I really like it a lot. Let's move on. Uh, Savaya Cellars was my winery of the year in 2016. And sorry, Rich, I didn't give it as much attention as YouTube as, as Curly Cellars I should have. But I was going through some trials in my life at that time, so there you go. This is a second label for Savaya Cellars. That's why I mentioned it. The Jack. 2014, The Jack. Cabernet Sauvignon, Columbia Valley, this rolls in at $15. It is a second label to Savaya Cellars. I really love Savaya Cellars. Rich Funk is a really cool guy. A good winemaker. Very family oriented. Great guy. Let's see what we get on those. He's coming up here in August. Looking forward to that. I'm very challenged on the nose, to tell you the truth. I'm not getting very many aromatics out of this at all. This is, a, like I said, a 2014. Like I said, 15, I, I like 14s. They're not as exciting to me as 13 and 15. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, really. I just get like a kind of a dull, very soft current notes coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very seamless. I mean, it is, it just flows seamlessly across the palate. And then it finishes with this nice little spice, like like um, white and black pepper notes that are coming through, which I find very interesting. Um, Rich came out with this label, 
you know, obviously as a cash cow to kind of support the winery, and it's done really well for them. This has a lot of current notes, but they're never overpowering. They stay in check. They're just nice. They're front to finish. I wouldn't say this is a hugely complex Cabernet Sauvignon, but I would say it's very delicious. And if you want to graduate it from the Murph, I would go to Savaya the Jack because it has, um, there's a little bit of that spice action on the back end, but I don't think that would offend anybody that's just learning about Cab. It tastes like a Cab. It has currants, a little bit of cherry, and get a little bit of blackberry notes coming through. I get a little tobacco on the mid-palate, and then a little bit of chocolate. Just a little bit of milk chocolate action underneath on the finish. The finish has just a slight grip on it. This is a cab that I believe anybody could drink. I'm really excited to try this 15. I wonder if it's available yet. I'll find out. It might be. I think this was in my cellar. I pulled it out because I want to do a Washington wine episode for March the 2nd. And here we are doing one for that day. Um, yeah, that's a good cab. That's a, a nice, easy to drink, but has some attitude cab. That's the way I'd put it. And I think that's really what Rich told me he was shooting for with this label. It wasn't shooting to do anything super fantastic, you know, super califragil super califragilistic, expialidocious sort of thing. You know what I mean? He wanted to do something that people would enjoy and drink, but still tastes like the varietal. Nice finish, not hugely long. I'm gonna go straight up B. I think it's above average. I think a B is a fair score for this one, a fair grade, I don't score. Fair grade for this wine. Uh, I don't know how many of you would have loved to have a B average in school. That's pretty cool if you do. I like the elements, there's enough complexity to keep your palate interested. And it's drinking really nice now. I don't know if they're on the 15, I'm gonna try. Might do another episode with all 15s because I'm very excited about the 2015 vintage. Hook up, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying watching these. Subscribe to my channel. I'm getting more and more subscribers. I love it. That makes me feel good, by the way. It makes me feel good. Subscribe, uh, make a comment if you have any ideas about what you want me to do on, on this episode. Uh, hook with, up with me on Twitter at Stan the Wine Man. Twitter at Stan the Wine Man. Facebook, Stan Rattan. Not at Stan the Wine Man, just Stan Rattan on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you, get some input on what you want me to do. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.